look, I'm conscious of your time. Uh, there's three other things I want to show you just quickly before before we go. Firstly, um, I think this is helpful. I think it's helpful to see what others are saying. So here's, look, here's um, Kenneth Chen, who is the Minister of Education in China, in Hong Kong at the moment. And he was speaking at this um, this event um, just just last year, and he said these things. And I think it's very interesting if you think about where Scandinavia is, chasing after the PISA results, and trying to get trying to get better scores and so on. What he's saying, they are top nation in PISA. He's saying that we will not stay top by keeping doing it the way we used to do it. We're only going to do it by moving on, uh, which is really significant. I think to hear from China. Um, and, but he's also saying this, he's saying I think we're going to need to move away from content knowledge. Content knowledge is out there, you know, selecting it, critiquing it, it's going to be really important. And he's also saying that if that's going to happen, um, then we really do need to learn about learning. And that is absolutely the cornerstone of where Hong Kong is going. That's very different, I think, to where Europe's been for the last, the last 10 years. And by the way, he took a moment to remind us that over in Singapore, um, they say they say this loud and clear. They say, you know, if we teach less, we will learn more. And that's a really interesting thing. So that brings us back then, I think, to that thought about those super classes. How could they possibly how could they possibly work? How can it be that in Australia those um, oh, sorry how can it be that in Australia those uh, enormous classes uh, and and in England can be so um, extraordinarily effective and. Uh, I'm going to have to look for this. Well, these oh, these super classes are. Oh, sorry, I have a cough. <laughs> I'm worrying poor old Enzo every time I cough, his ears will fall off. <laughs> these super classes are really very interesting because if you imagine that the, the three of you in the front row are teaching 75 children, that's about what we have on the stand at the moment, probably nearer 200. But um, you know, and your job would be to lead the lesson. You're narrating the lesson. You're you're guiding the lesson. So if you're not sure what to do, you, you're looking for the person with the red badge on because she will know what to do. But your job is much more complicated. You're looking for people who are stuck. They've got a bit lost and you're like a breakdown van. You know, if you break down on the on the, on the motorway, you know, you too much snow and your car's died, you know. You're the breakdown van and you're looking for people who are stuck. So he looks a bit stuck. And how often in a class have you seen somebody with a hand up and you say, yeah, I'll help you in a minute, but first I have to do this. You know? So you still just sit there. Well, with super classes, you don't. She comes straight to you the minute, and she's excited. She's looking for people who are stuck. She likes her whole life. And probably the best of the three teachers would be this one, because unpacking your misunderstanding is quite a complex thing. You know? You're trying to make your little robot move around the floor in a triangle, you know, and you've said, I want you to do three times going forward and then turn through, well it's a triangle, turn through 60 degrees and now instead of a triangle you've got a line and we're going, what went wrong? Well she's smart, so she says, ah oh, it's the internal angles and the external angles, that's where your confusion is. And so you really need to know your stuff. But your job is differentiation, you're stretching and broadening. And you're looking for somebody, well, she knows all this already, so you're going to lead her on to the next bit. And she doesn't know it, but actually she really cares about motorbikes. So you're going to sort of try and nudge it into motorbikes to fit her. So you're leading, you're doing the remedial repair work, and you're doing the differentiation. Now, any good teacher would do those three things, but only one at a time. It turns out the three teachers working in a team can do it in parallel, can do it so much faster. And the super classes schools are saying, well, they get through five terms in four terms, sometimes three terms, and pace is just extraordinary. So I do think what we've got to do is look really hard at our existing practice and say, how might we do this better? And my, my, my really interesting last little example of this comes from um, Mark Oliphant College, which is in um, in Australia, just out, just out there in November, and it's um, <coughs> so look, it's a nice place. <laughs> it's the view from my bedroom. You know. um, it's a very playful place, and I keep coming back to play because there's a purpose. The last thing I'll say to you will be about play. But you know, and here's their staff meeting. You'll see the bean bags out for the staff meeting. You know, it's, it's a place with interesting furniture. 
and it's got great toilets. You know? <laughs> but the bit I'm trying to get to is um, is down here somewhere. It's here. And what you see here is that it's absolute data transparency. Now, this is very un-European. You know, normally we have levels of secrecy about in privacy. Um, but here, and when I took this photograph, two children came up to me. One was this little girl here who came up and she was really excited to report. She moved from a level four to a level five reading. In fact, she thought she was so good at level five, she put herself up here. You know? She thought, not just level five, I'm level five, you know. But at the same time she was telling me this, a boy over here at this end was excited with me telling me that he moved from the red numbers right through to the green in one turn. And they were both congratulating each other. It was really interesting. The, the sense was that you moved a bit, you moved a hell of a lot, but we were both pleased because we both moved. And I think one of the things we've got out of technology is that children are much more comfortable with data transparency. They're much more comfortable with knowing each other's performance. And indeed, when they know each other's performance, then they can help. If this little girl hadn't moved at all, the others would have been critical, but the fact that she moved was the important thing. And the fact that they were all moving turned out to be really significant. So I do think we're in this really interesting world where I think we're rebuilding the way that learning happens. I think we're doing it with children, not for children. In Europe we used to do education for children, now we're doing it with them. And I do think that their levels of expectation have changed really radically. I've been doing some some work interviewing children that have been, well, I can just show you maybe, um, here. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm working with these children in Madrid. They've been taught in one of the most radical design schools in Madrid. That's the school in the background. That's one of the teaching rooms. You can see it's all made to look like a shop. But I'm working with them on redesigning the university because it's really interesting. That experience of passing through school has changed what they expect universities like. You can't go through school and have so much fun and be so engaged with your learning and make such progress and be so supportive of each other and then arrive at university and have it all taken away. And that, I think, is really, really interesting. I've got a little quote here from a group of children who designed the classroom we were looking at a little earlier. I'm just going to finish with, with them reflecting on reflecting on what it's like, what they expect university -like life to be like as a result of the schools that they've been to. I'll just play a little clip, which I haven't got We're going to talk a little bit about university life, um, but tell me a little bit about this space first of all. What's, what's special here? Yeah, what's special about this place? Carson was designed by students, uh, so it was designed by people who aren't going to use it um, now and for future generations and it incorporates a lot of the things that we use at home and technology we use at home and technology we're familiar with and I think that um, helps and I think that's what makes this classroom like, really unique. It's quite good for group work, so if we just want to move to our own space in the classroom and we need something to write, we don't have to search for paper and pen, and we can just get one of the board pens and write things down. And I love the coloured light when does the coloured light change during the day? Yeah, it? they're mood lights, so we can, they can change themselves and we can change the settings. So you can set different mood colours. Do you think you can get spaces like this in the, in the universe? But I think the universities would have probably thought more about that because they're more experienced with students, maybe they're bigger and there's more students so they have more opinions. I know that when I go to university there's going to be like a range of different types of learning styles and I'll be able to choose the styles that I like to learn in and it'll be more independent. Be much, much different from a traditional like, secondary school. What do you think? So what you see here is really interesting and I think if you're looking for a theme happening in learning is that, is that the children who are coming through these radical learning experiences are so excited about the quality of their performance, the, the level of their performance, that they're not going to turn back. And you can hear there, I think, their, their expectation about what university life is going to be like is very, very different from, from yours and mine. I'm a, I'm a professor at three universities, you know, so it's very different to your expectation. And I think that's, that's the change. As you look around this show as visitors, you'll see the show change from, it used to be a show where people arrived and bought, you know, a thousand computers or, you know, 20 white, interactive whiteboards. Now the children are arriving with the technology and that's having a huge and profound impact, I think, on, on the whole thing. We've gone, we've gone, if you like, 
to this point where we're simply saying to the kids, look, you know, bring your stuff and, and the school will provide the things that make the stuff work. That will be screens, but it will be a better curriculum, it will be more engaging tasks, it will be a different organisation of the day, it will be a different relationship with the teachers, it will be a very, very different place. Have you got five minutes more?